Hi everyone, my name is Sol. I am an environment artist on the Frame team and today I am going to teach you a little bit about making uh, simple environments um, with baked lighting uh, for Frame. This is the first video in a series about uh, creating environments for Frame. Now this is what we're going to be working on today. Super simple little environment that I made really quick uh, just for this tutorial, um, just to show you some, yeah, the super basics of making a performant frame environment. Now, this type of environment is really good for um, like mobile or VR use, or if you have a large event where you want to make sure that, you know, performance is uh, really high. If that's for you, then this will be a good uh, good starter guide. I've uh, already modeled this space because I assume that if you uh, know how to use Blender and you're interested in making um, an environment, um, you already know the basics of modeling. Um, this isn't going to be a modeling tutorial. This is going to be, okay, how do you get your environment ready for frame? So. Here is the model in Blender, and uh, this is the pre-baked model. Now I will hide the baked model and just show you the model here without any uh, baked lighting. Now I've set up the scene with an HDRI uh, for some nice natural lighting, and I uh, made a lot of openings in the space so that uh, it can be lit entirely with this uh, HDRI. Uh, just for simplicity, and I, I like the way that HRI lighting looks. This model is already UV unwrapped, uh, super simple. I just did it a quick like um, smart UV project. Here, look, smart UV project, and then uh, I have UV Pack Master, so I also. Just packed it with UV Pack Master to get a little bit more out of the texture space. So this scene is super simple. It just has uh, two materials, um, very basic materials, just with the the principal shader um, and you know some different base colors on here. So very simple. And uh, to bake these materials and this lighting information into a single texture for this environment for frame, you have to have a texture node in every material on your object or on the objects in your scene. Um, you have to have the same uh, texture in all of those materials and it has to be the active node in each material when you go to bake it. Um, so I've done that. I created a, a texture by clicking this little icon here. And this texture is just 1K uh, for the purposes of this video uh, to so that the bake would be pretty quick. I just did 1K. And uh, it looks pretty good on an environment of this size. I would recommend keeping your textures as small as possible um, because when you're doing anything on the web, it's really nice to have quick load times. Um, yeah, so small as possible. If, uh, if you need more resolution, then do it. Uh, a lot of our environments have 4K textures and we can keep them, if it's like a simple, just a baked environment, can keep that at around a two to three megabytes usually. Um, something with a 1K texture like this can be just a few hundred kilobytes. So depends on your needs and how fast you want people to be able to load this up. All right, so I have my materials set up. Oh, I actually created a new image texture and I didn't mean to do that. 
Right, so now both of these have the same image texture as the active node in here. And in the render settings, I have it set to the cycles render engine, GPU compute, because I have a nice GPU in this computer um, that will work a lot faster than my CPU. Um, I like viewport denoising uh, just because it gives you a really quick um, idea of what it's going to look like. Without viewport denoising, it's uh, kind of grainy at first. If you can see that, you know, while you're moving, you can't really see exactly what it's going to look like. Um, with denoise turned on, it looks almost as good as the final render after it's been, you know, c cleared up for a few seconds. So I like, I like to use that. I feel like it uh, helps me work faster because I don't have to wait for it to resolve before I can tell what it's going to look like. Anyway. And then in the actual final render settings, uh, I have it pretty low. I, I would normally have it a lot higher than this for the final uh, texture. But depending on your machine and how long it's going to take you to bake, um, you know, you, you, can, you can tweak these settings as you, as you need. I have it set to 1,000, and then I have denoising enabled so that um, it'll take out the, the noise from the low samples. And it looks pretty good. So let's see. All right, I think we are ready to bake. Um, I have it set to a combined bake. Now the, the baking tab is uh, in the, the render tab in the properties panel, uh, all, almost all the way down to the bottom. It'll I think it'll be closed by default and you'll have to open it up. And we want the combined bake type. You can uh, choose specific uh, passes, but for this tutorial, we're going to do combined and have all of these checked. All right, so now we're just going to do a bake real quick. All right, the bake is done and it looks good. I actually had to rebake because I. Um, had another mesh enabled in rendering that was overlapping it. So make sure to keep any meshes that you don't want interfering with your bake turned off in rendering. So let's preview this. I'm going to disable the working model and enable the bake and go into material preview and there it is there's the baked texture applied on the model and it looks great now uh, the way that I've done this is I uh, duplicated the uh, model that I just baked from and I deleted its materials made a new material and just stuck that texture right into the surface uh, output. Now you can export this as a GLB and import it into frame. So uh, one thing that you want to keep in mind um, before you export is that the origin point of the scene so uh, x0, y0, um, z0 will be where people spawn into your environment by default. So you want to put that wherever you want them to spawn in. And I didn't want them to spawn in the center, so I moved it off to the side a little bit. Now to export this, I go to File, Export, GLTF 2.0 and you want to limit to selected objects. That's something I do most of the time because if you have things hidden in your scene, um, like not visible in the viewport, uh, those will be exported along with everything else if this is not 
uh, checked. So uh, what I do is I um, go into my scene and hide anything I don't want. And then I just hit A, selects everything in the that's visible. And then you can do file export um, without worrying about that stuff being included. And then I like to um, set the export settings for this to JPEG in the material so that any images are just automatically uh, converted to JPEG. Um, yeah, so export this wherever you like. All right, and now go into frame and uh, I'll just switch this over to the empty environment real quick just so you can see that it's a new environment that uploads in. So in the frame settings right here, upload custom environment. And my example environment should be pretty quick because this file is very small and there we go super fast load in because uh, this is only using a 1k texture oh. and looks good so that, that's it for super basic environments. Um, we will be talking about more complex environments um, and uh, different types of uh, materials that you can export um, and get working in frame in some uh, tutorials in the future. So hope this was helpful and uh, yeah, have a nice day. Bye.